people deluded. I'm here with a special guest, man. Arsenal first year scholar, Daniel. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Like we was talking about off air, I'm just finding things to do in lockdown and I'm just bored, man. How you been in lockdown? Yeah. What have you been up to? I'm ticking over, really. Just obviously keeping, keeping on the ball, running, but not playing with someone is hard, isn't it? So I'm just ticking over. I just kind of obviously a bit of FIFA, Fortnite there as well. But yeah, just keeping busy. FIFA, what are you on PS3? Four, sorry, four. Ah, uh, no, Xbox, Xbox. Right, Everyone's good. on to me about. Oh, they're giving you the smoke, but it's good. You're on the next. <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It must be tough for you, man, especially because you're like a fullback. A big part of your game is like running. I mean, there's only so mm. much 5K runs and all these drills you can do without replicating actual matches, man. How is it? How are you finding keeping motivated, knowing that you don't really know when you're going to be playing ball again? Yes, um, motivation has never really been a thing. Like, it's just I'm always motivated type of thing. So, like, motivation is something that I don't have to really worry about. It's just keeping busy because I'm quite active. So, always trying to do something. So, just making sure I'm doing the right thing to keep them busy. And yeah, that's that's the hardest part: what to do rather than when to do it. Mm. So, like, what's it? Um, are you still in contact with Arsenal coaches and your teammates? And like, how is that yeah, yeah. contact? We have like meetings regularly, like whole team meetings. Um, so yeah, we meet like once, twice a week. We we'll talk about like how things is going. We have skip like running that we have to do, a bit of ball work that we have to do, send it back to them. But yeah, everyone's still in contact. Like it's all good. I remember seeing that um, Arsenal in relation to the first team players were sending equipment and stuff. I assume that's been extended mm. to you guys as well in the academy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything. What sort of things are they doing? Just like resistant bands, um, obviously work, school work as well. They've been sending through a lot of school work. Yeah, you know, with that, man. <laughs> They've been sending through a lot of school work. So, yeah, just stuff like that, really, just to help us get better. Don't want to stay in the same place, always want to get better. So, it's little things. Makes sense. Have you been trying to learn any skills away from football, like a language or anything, or reading anything or anything? I haven't learned a language. I've been reading a lot. Mm. I've been reading way more than usual. I'm not a reader, but now I'm a reader. So I've been reading, <laughs> I've been reading a lot. Um, tried a bit of cooking as well. What you yeah, cook? Obviously, I made I made a bit of jerk chicken. Man, like well. <laughs> Did it bang? And the veggies there. It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't it wasn't the same, but it was. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. Was that was that first time cooking chicken? Yeah, yeah. First time cooking chicken. Even rice. First time doing both. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. I mean, you'll be That's cool, right. man. You'll be cool because obviously as a professional footballer, eventually you're going to move away from home and, you know, you might be in a mm. hotel somewhere. So that's good, man. But, um, yeah, man, in relation to when you first started kicking ball, tell me a bit about that. What club did you first play for? How did you first, like, find out about football and have a passion for it? Football was through my cousins, my older cousins. They were like, four years older than me. But we just used to... So they lived down in this place and behind it was this like this Sunday league team called Belmont behind where they behind their garden. So we used to like climb over that fence that like, couple like any time we could really climb over that fence, kick ball there, and then climb back over into his garden after. So from there that was maybe six and I was like six maybe, maybe a bit younger. We used to climb over that fence and then after that I actually started playing for Belmont. So so I played for Belmont U for a few years, sure, well, for like half a season, and then I got scouted for Barnet. What was I going to say? Um, in relation to when you you just mentioned Belmont, I, a bit of a random question, but that's East London, right? Like Waltham stuff, I assume. Oh uh, no, nah, um, like Northwest. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Northwest London. So how did the? Do you remember the day you got scouted for Barnet or the game or how it all worked out? Um, yeah, like Barnet was like really close to my school, so like I live really close to the to the training ground so mm. a few of us went over for like this open trial kind of thing and yeah just me maybe one or two others got offered a six-week trial after that then yeah just from there kicked on got signed after like two sessions that's good man how long was you at Barnet? So at Barnet from under nines to the end of under 14s joined Arsenal to the beginning of under 15s you was there for a minute. You was you was there. Yeah, I was there for long. Was there for a minute, man. <laughs> did you like during? I assume like Arsenal might not have been the first offer. Like, was there was there yeah. a couple of other clubs interested in you? Um, I was meant to go. So before Arsenal, obviously, like, there was I was talking to Watford quite a bit. 
Mm. There was um, QPR, but the main club before I was going to go to Arsenal, I was meant to go to West Ham. So I was meant to go to West Ham now a couple of days before. Then Arsenal kind of just, well, just well. hijacked it, kind of. Thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the balance for you with Arsenal? Because like you said, you listed, uh, I mean, I would love to be in your position. If QPR, I, mm. listed, I would have driven there myself. But like, mm. you've kind of not gone to them clubs and Arsenal, like you said, have swooped in. What was it that made like Arsenal's the one for me? I want to go in. Obviously, the history, the, the players that they bring through. It was just for development at that age, especially. The players, all the players were technically top, physically top. They Arsenal just they know they know what they're doing with their academy. So mm. in terms of that, it was it was it was a no-brainer. Let's be honest, <laughs> it was a no-brainer. I mean, it's lovely to hear that. Um, obviously, being an Arsenal fan, you mentioned <coughs> you know you meant you went there at fourteen. Now, obviously, you mm. know more about the academy circuit than me. But looking at that, you've probably got what under 15s You're approaching approaching crucial periods with the scholarship. Mm. Did you ever have that in the back of your mind? Sort of thing is that I might leave a comfortable thing here at Barnet where I'm probably undoubtedly going to get a scholar there is no kind of guarantee I might get that at Arsenal like mm. how did you feel about that yeah it was it was one of them ones where um obviously I believe in God so I'd pray about it and then just one of them ones where football is a game where if you don't take risks then you you'll never know and you don't want to live with regrets so going to Arsenal was was a no-brainer I'll go there work hard and it paid off in the end really yeah, I mean, you mentioned taking risks in your in the way you play. That's one thing I like about you. You're solid defensively, but you're not afraid to take a pass. And it's funny seeing you say that and how it transpires into your game. Obviously, you've gone to Arsenal now, and you know it's mm. Ars- it's Arsenal. Like you said, you rejected a couple of clubs, and they took you. They're trying to get the best players in England, all over, all abroad as well. You're kind of always on trial, sort of thing. Like you always have to prove mm. yourself, sort of thing. Did you feel any sort of pressure or anxiety or anything or any self doubt in these sort of moments? Ah, uh, this is a story I haven't told anyone this. But well, the day before my first game for Arsenal, when I told you that I didn't sleep. This is just yeah. a normal under fifteen games against Charlton, my first game for Arsenal. I didn't sleep. I called I was I was actually I wasn't even at home. So I was I was at this thing called ISFA. It was like a, a like a national thing for like schools. So like all the best players like in the schools would play for them. Kinda like a schools England kind of thing. Swear. So I was there. The day before I was there, I was staying there um, and Arsenal said, yeah, they want me to play against Charlton. So I was there, I was, I was nervous, man. I was in my room, I was saying to my mum. I had a few niggles as well, my knees was hurting because I played a game the day before because I didn't know I was going to have to play for Arsenal. Mm. So I played a game the day before, I had a few niggles, my knees was hurting. I had bad knees, like, growing pains was crazy for me. Yeah, that's so, that is isn't that. Yeah, okay. so... I had bad knees. I was like, Mom, I don't know if I can play. Like, I was, I was scared, man. I was very scared. But went there, went played against Charlton, scored two goals, got like two assists or something. It was a very good game for me. That, that was probably the best game that I played for Arsenal. That first game. See, you got over it, man. And that's that's how you know football's a very psychological game because you kind of psyched yeah. yourself out before it and you batted mm. it, up, scored all your goals. You mentioned goals. Now I've always known known you as a fullback. Was you scoring from fullback or was you in a different position these times? Nah, I was uh, when I first joined Arsenal, I was a winger, winger and a striker. So I played anywhere across the front three. Mm. So that's what happened when I first joined. So when I first went to Arsenal, I was playing like wide, I was playing attacking roles. So, but then under 16 season, under six, so like nearly just over a year now, I've been playing right back. Mm. So under 16 season, they decided that. For me going forward, Perma, Asaka and Marcel, they decided that for me going forward, I can be a top right back. Top right back. I played right back for a month and then got called up for England. So, paid off. Yeah, it did. It did pay off. It did pay off. And I've seen a lot of you. I've seen a lot of your games for England and things like that. So, you know, they've made the right decision. Did you have any teething problems at first? Or was it a, a lot of adjusting to playing right back? Or was it literally just yeah. same stuff, different position? It was, a, it was, I think, honestly, for me, it was the best thing for me. A lot of my friends used to ask me, like, oh, don't you want to play strike? I don't you want to score? I think for me, the best thing is that I could have, I could have made in my career that like, so far that it was, it, it suits the way I, I like to play. I like to see things in front of me. When, I'm, when I was playing nine, it's a lot of back to goal. Mm. So for me, and then driving into the space is what I'm good at as well. So just that seeing it in front of me, driving into the space, linking with the, with the winger, 
getting overlaps, trying to get forward as well. It, it makes you stand out more as a fullback. So yeah. for me, and playing I'm, fullback, it was it was good. And I think I think I see a lot of that in your game. Like you, I mean, a lot of modern day fullbacks used to be wingers or further positions. I think you've got the perfect blend of like you're quite strong and solid defensively. Being a former attacker, I mean, I don't think the academy bosses, without knowing them, have to tell you to go forward and try and cross yeah. and these sort of things. Do you feel? Not that it's ever easy making at Arsenal, but looking as a fan, as a fan, like I don't see too many right backs at the team. Obviously, you're still young. I see you as someone, if you work hard, which you're doing, there's no reason as to why you couldn't progress the first team. Do you think that gives you added added inspiration, knowing that there's a potential pathway there? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I see the pathway right now, so I'm just trying to work to get working hard every day, improving my game. So that's there's a pathway. So I just need to do my thing and make sure I take advantage of it. Yeah. Makes sense. Obviously, this is your first year as like a proper full-time sort of player sort of thing. How different is it from, not that it's different, because I mean, before I assume you was probably training three times a week and a match or four mm. times a week, but you're kind of training every day. How different is that nowadays and how much does it, does it, how does it affect your body and, you, and stuff like that that we might as fans not see? So, even my first four months in full-time, I was injured. So that was... That was hard for me. I dislocated my shoulder playing for England. So that was that was hard first four months I was injured. So going in every day but not playing not playing football at all. Tough. Just doing gym, but you still have to be there. You still have to go to the team meetings, watching them play. Watching them play was hard for me. Because you want you want to be on the pitch showing what you can do as well. Because obviously when you're not playing, someone's playing in your position. So but Full time football compared to compared to like under sixteens and that is it's very different in terms of training. I thought you progress so much quicker. Like you come in full time and you technically, physically especially, like you progress. Obviously at the beginning it's very hard. A lot of the boys have had like little injuries that they've never had before and other things like that. But honestly, full time football is it's hard, but the progression rate if you can stay fit, it's very rapid, it's very quick. How did you get injured? I know you said you dislocated your shoulder, but if you could detail it, what happened? Um, so I was uh, training. We played. So I was with England and France in a tournament at Montague. So we played Argentina the first game. We I think we drew one all. Oh. Then we had a we had like a rest day. In the rest day, now we played. Um, in the rest day, we had um like a training session. So we had a training session like head tennis. So. I was doing head tennis now. I've gone to like do like a overhead kind of kick thing. Arms gone down, <laughs> shoulders just. I swear. Yeah, it was terrible, Did it hurt? Man. Stupid question, but did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt, but it was it went out and then it kind of just went back in by itself straight away. Imagine. So it was just like, but after that I had to I got the surgery done. So now everything. What was your feeling? What was your feeling? Obviously, during... I was gutted. Mm. I was gutted because you want to play for England, especially that time. It was my second, my second tournament for England, so I was just I was breaking into the England team. I was playing well, playing very well for England. So I was I was gutted, but the coaches just reassured me that I'm just keep doing what I'm doing. And I, sh- it shouldn't, I shouldn't worry about it in terms of playing for England again. And in terms of my place, I shouldn't worry about it because I've been doing well. So it made made me feel a bit better when they said that. And it's been a bit of a it's been a it's a it's been a bit of a weird season for Arsenal at this level collectively. Yeah, for you, it's been it, it, for you, it's been a it's been a mixed one as well. Like you said, you started it off injured. For me, you bounced back strongly. Got to see you play right back. Actually, saw you play in midfield a couple of times, and yeah, then you yeah. got an opportunity in the under twenty three. So, how is the season? How do you feel about the season for you as an individual and as a team collectively in your first year? For me, I feel like I've learned a lot this season. So, playing first time, playing for points, really. So just learning a lot, learning how to play the game, different stages of game, game management, things like that. So I feel like I've learned a lot. And then even me getting opportunities in the 23s, by coming off the bench and I started as well. I started as well for the 23s. So that was good for me in terms of the next step after under 18 is football, in terms of knowing what that is and knowing what I have to get to. So hopefully I can make that a more permanent thing next season. But that it was good for me playing with the 23s. But as a team for the under 18s, it was up and down, had a lot of injuries, a lot of players playing 23s or not playing 18s, a lot of, it was up and down season. Sometimes, some games, play well, not get the result. We, I think we, we obviously defensively weren't great, 
but we also we couldn't we we didn't have a great season in terms of scoring. Mm. There was a lot of games where we would if we're winning, we're winning one 0 If we're if we're losing, we can lose but we'll lose like four one or something. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like so whether defensively obviously we weren't great, but going forward we weren't great as well. That's something that we have to work on. And I think going into next season, especially with um for the under eighteens with the first years, first years were very good groups. When we were under sixteens we got to the Premier League Cup final. And then the year below us now, they're a good group as well. They got to the Premier League Cup final as well. So I think us two together next year, playing 18s, I think, will be a very, very, very dangerous squad. It'll be a very good squad. So do I. And how do you feel about how do you feel about next season? Because obviously you've had your first year, you almost next season, you and a lot of other first year scholars now, second years, you're gonna to have to be the leaders. Everybody should lead, but you're gonna to have to be the leaders, the experienced people that when times are going tough. That you, you lot have to lead by example and look on. Mm. You, it, how do you feel about that? Is that something you relish? <clears throat> yeah, definitely, definitely, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited for next season. Whether I play 18s, whether I play to me, wherever I play, I'm excited. I'm excited to just get on the pitch, really. Especially now, because we're, we're at home, I'm puts everything in perspective. Like just being on the pitch is a blessing, man. I just wanna, just wanna start playing again. Um, start taking. The new, the new first years under my wing, take a few of them under my wing, make sure they're all good. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Next season should be good. It should be, man. And I, and I hope that is the case. Um, obviously, when you stepped up to under-18s football, it, you, you kind of indirectly answered this question, but football gets a bit serious now. Now it's about, you know, pro deals and progression and things like that. Mm. How do you do you subconsciously see that when you're playing? Like, does it? How does it feel that it's become? Obviously, it's still a game and stuff, but it's a bit more cutthroat now. It's 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 a job now, really. It's not just a hobby. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I was fortunate that when I came back, I wasn't. I didn't have a long spell on the bench, or I kind of came back and was straight back into it. So, unfortunately, I haven't I haven't spent any time on the bench where I have to think about, ah, uh, like he's he's ahead of me, that I need to work hard obviously there's people that also play in the same position of me that I'm challenging against every day but, but it's just it's just your friends but you're not your friends to uh, your friends off the pitch when you get on the pitch I mean if you're on the same team yeah cool but if you're fighting for the same position you gotta be watching what he's doing and training a little bit with, your, with, it, with one eye and focusing on what you're doing because although they'll tell you to focus on yourself but you're, it's a competition, really. You're on the same team, but it's competition. So you just gotta make sure you're doing a bit more, a bit more than everyone, so you can stay ahead and and just be the best you can be, really. And if you be the best you can be, I'm sure that you'll be playing every week and not have fun with it. Yeah, you're right. Everything else will take care of itself, or should do if you do yeah. what you can. What shocked you in in terms of under twenty threes? Was it the, I mean, eighties firstly, and then twenty threes? Was it the pace of the game? Was it the physical aspect? Was it like you said, you have it, three points at the end of the day? This really means something. It's not you learn from everything, but there's a reason for winning and losing and whatnot. What what single aspect shocked you the most at these levels? Um, when moving up to eighteens, because I came back from injury, it was fitness. I just needed to get fit, match fit was just it was hard for me to get match fit, but the fitness part of that was the hardest. But for twenty threes it's it's more of the, the speed. When because my the game where I started was against Monaco. So that that was the harder position. So they were just they were all over us. So like any they're pressing, pressing, pressing they won't stop pressing. So it's more of the speed of what you're doing and having your next pass in your head really. Like you can have it in your head, but you, you need to know how you're going to do it and how you're going to do it as quickly as possible. So it's just the extra little details as you go up the levels, I think, that makes it a bit harder. Yeah, from speaking to you, you sound like you've, you've learned a lot and whatnot. Um, obviously, what you want to, what anyone wants to do in life in terms of getting their goals and what happens in the months that follow can change things. What I mean by that is, did you set any goals at the start of the season for yourself? Yeah, but the start of this season, obviously because of the injury, I just wanted to make sure that I get back. I get into the 18s team and just make sure that I'm one of the first names on the team sheet. Um, obviously, playing playing 23s was in my mind, but it wasn't. It wasn't because of the injury. It kind of sent me back a little bit, so it wasn't one of the things that I put in in black and white writing that I wanted to do. But I'm glad I've done it. I mean, it's, 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 I've, I feel like I've exceeded my my targets at the beginning of the season. Mm. Without talking too tough, have you got any targets for next season? 
yeah, just 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 make sure that I get done what I need to get done. Come come the first half of the season, which way we can everything's good by, by January, December, and then see what happens from there. Decent stuff, man. Um, what was I gonna ask you in relation to you know you you you're someone who's very reflective on your own performances and honest it, at eighteens level. What's been your best and worst games if you had to think of any? Best game, um, oh, best game might be against Fulham away. Fulham away or Aston Villa at home. I think Fulham away we drew two two. I scored that game. That was a good game for me. I, Quite a lot of attacking and defensively, I was solid as well. Then Aston Villa at home, it was a good game. Like it was a good game for me. We didn't win. I think I think we lost one 0 or two one or something like that. But I, I played very well that game. I dominated my my opponent and and um, got forward quite a lot that game. So those two games, but I, I would say full them full them away. Cool. Um, and in relation to players you played against, who's the best you have played with and against? Within Arsenal or just. Any yeah. anyone man, it could be the best player you played with. They don't have to be at Arsenal, and obviously against it um, could be Arsenal elsewhere. Best player I played with, probably Jude. Jude is good. Bellingham for those player. who don't know where we're getting. Obviously, without without talking about the like first team at Arsenal, just like the academy and that, it'll, it'll be Jude. Jude Bellingham, yeah, he's a good player. He's a very good player. So he's the best you played with and against. You say best I played with. I've never played against him, but best I played against. Just talking about from my experience at Arsenal, like one v ones, it might be, might have to be Nathan Butler. Yeah, one v one. He's attacking. had a good season. Yeah, he's rapid. He's just rapid, man. And he's strong, man. Strong boy. Deceiving. One v one defending De- Nathan Butler. Decent stuff. Um, you know, you spoke about playing for England. Now, I see the I see the differences at, at any level playing international club football, but I'm not a player. How different mm. is it playing with not a bunch of strangers, but you're not with them on a day in, day out. You're playing essentially as strangers, different styles. The manager might play that different tactically to how Arsenal is. How different is it and how do you adjust to it? It's different, but Arsenal, we like to play football, so it helps more than coming from maybe a, a club that doesn't play a lot of football. So coming from Arsenal to England, because England like to play good football, play out every, no matter the situation, we're trying to play out. You know, even if we're in our own box, back to goal, they don't want you to clear it. <laughs> they want you to find a way to play out. So that, obviously that's good. It improves us as a player. And rem- just to remember that that it's youth football, so we're still trying to improve. So in- England remind us that a lot. Although they want you to perform at a high level, um, mistakes aren't the end of the world because if, if you play the way we play at England where we're playing out it, it's going to happen so mistakes aren't the end of the world they just want you to take risks and always tell you to, to be fearless so that's how it is at England like Arsenal is more, more structured but I guess that's because they're there all the time mm-hmm. England they want you to express yourself a bit more Arsenal you can express yourself but it's more there's more of a, a, like, a routine to do things what was your best game at? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, at international level, what was your best game? Because I remember you lot at 17s, if I remember correctly, you lot absolutely destroyed Brazil in one game. And you lot had you oh, lot yeah, had yeah, quite yeah. a good crop of players there, man. You got you, yeah. Jude, Mislara, and the rest of them. So, yeah. Best game, uh, France against France. We beat France, I think, I think it was 4 1. Beat France 4 1. It was a night game. It was good, at, good little atmosphere there in that game. A few people watching, it was, it was a good game. Good game for us as a team, like, I've never seen, played very, very well in England as well. So it was our fans there, but a very good game against France. Yeah, that was probably the best game. You mentioned, you mentioned crowd in that, in that, um, is that something that you've had to get used to as well, playing for Arsenal? Because naturally, obviously, there's people watching it, but it tends to be behind closed doors. Um, mm. 23s gets a bit of a crowd. Obviously, international football the same. FA Youth Cup tends to get that. Is that something psychologically you've had to, you and the boys have had to deal with? <clears throat> yeah, we've had a few. Arsenal are good at like workshops and how to deal with your mental health and that. We've had a, loads of workshops on how to play under pressure. So it's just doing what they tell us to do, put it into practice and find what helps find what works for us so playing against in big stadiums and like with a lot of people watching it's just what what helps you some people don't like to acknowledge it 
and that's how that's how they deal with it. They just don't think it's another game. Some people like the pressure, they like feeling it, they like the crowd, they like hearing them, that gets them ready for it. So it just depends how you are and how you'll adapt to it really. For me it's just just a bit of both really. Just another game in my head. But when you see people there and that makes gives me a bit of energy, gives me a bit of confidence, gives me a confidence piece to, to see us play. So you feed off the buzz. Sign. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I mean, playing for, I mean, you get, what I, what strikes me, and, and I've, I've told you this before, you're very humble, but you're very confident. Like, you're confident in that you know you need to improve, but you're confident in general because there's no reason not to. And I think that's going to stand you in good stead. Um, you seem like a very self-reflective man as well. Um, if you had to, what would you say are your strengths and weaknesses, or if not weaknesses, things you could work on as a professional? Um, things I can work on, obviously, because new to the position, about my position and sometimes, playing fullback could be better and um, my throwings as well I need to work on my throwings throwings is a natural it's not natural to me to be honest so I need to keep practicing on my throwings but I feel like I'm good I'm good on the ball I like going forwards I like playing forwards I don't like playing backwards so just when I have the ball I feel, I feel that's my strength on the ball Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a right back, clearly not to your standard, but I know if someone gave me the opportunity to play in central midfield, I would have relished it. And like I said at the start, occasionally you've you've played there. Is that is that something you're considering? If if it was, you'd consider doing on a full time basis. Have you got? I know right back's your first priority, but would you ever consider moving into midfield centrally? I mean, I'm, I I don't know, but you never know what the future holds. <laughs> <is>, so <laughs> keep our options open. You know, what I'm saying I'm playing a little wing, play a little bit of fullback. Play centre back as well. Play a lot of positions, man. So you never know what the future is. What's the worst thing about being a fullback? When the wingers aren't coming back and it's a two v, <laughs> it's a two v one. The fullbacks bombed on. The other, the man, the wingers. So the winger has the ball. The fullbacks bombed on. He's doing overlaps and that, and it's just you versus two man, and you're just trying to diffuse the situation. Literally, you're not even at that point. You're not even trying to win the ball. Just trying to defuse them, trying to force them to go back. But if the winger's not helping you, it's, it's hard still because if they pass it, you're going to have to run there and get it quickly, try and block the cross, or just force them backwards. So it's, when it's a 2v1 down that side, it's hard, especially if the 10 comes as well. Sometimes it's 3v1, but people don't even see it like that. They see it like it's just, oh, it's like 1v1, it's the fullback, your job kind of thing. But the 10's there, the man's there as well. 10's making runs in behind, you're trying to stay in, but you want to stay close to the man on the ball as well. So it's just, it's just, yeah. When 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 they're not checking their runners, have to get into them. So. How do you deal with that? Because I, I, like I said, I used to be a Sunday league right back, and mentally, obviously, we're all prideful. I used to find that hard, especially when I'm getting ripped and there's nothing I can do. Like you said, two beat ones, runners, and like people aren't seeing this. How do you deal with they're that? They're not seeing it. You just gotta tell them. You gotta tell them there and then, or you gotta tell them in the changing room. Because if you don't tell them, no one's gonna, no one's gonna know, and they're not gonna help you for next time. So. Literally, as soon as you tell them, you've got to make sure that they do it. If, they, if it happens again, then that's when you call them out kind of thing. That like, I've told you, do your job, isn't it? Because it's, it's a team now. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So you just got to tell them, tell them straight up. Can't be, can't, can't be putting it in a, in a nice way or something like that. You've got to just tell them, like, it's what it is, man. It's football, it's football. Do you know what I'm saying? You've got to mm. do the job. From a tactical point of view, what do you like? I mean, I say tactical. Tactical is not the right word. Obviously, you know, you can do as many drills as you want and things like that to improve 1v1. And there are many different things at being a fullback. How much, I guess, analytical work do you do in terms of looking at yourself, your previous videos, watching your games again, um, looking at other players for reference points and the rest of it? Loads, loads. Every, every chance we get, we do anal- analysis like for a few times a week. And then me and my spare time, just watching football, which are my favourite players. I do it all the time. I do it without unconsciously now. It's not even like I have to think about it now. I just do it anyway. I'll come home. I'll go on YouTube or whatever. I'll go on Huddle. Look at my favourite players, like elite examples, like the players doing the best in it right now. And I'll be looking at, um, obviously, myself and in my games, what I can do, what I've done well, what I haven't done, what I haven't done so well and how I can do better next time in the same situation. So I do that all the time now. All the time. That makes sense. In relation to the first team, have you got to train with the first team on any occasions? Like to feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few times, yeah. What was that like? 
it was good. It was good. Obviously, there's still like, yeah, it's just a bummy gang. It's like a zero. It's Pepe. So it was obviously oh, a bit like, yeah, but the more you train with them, the better it is. I feel, I feel like training with them is good. It's good for, for my development. When I train with them, I feel like I've done well as well. So just keep training with them. Whenever I get the opportunity, just make sure I'm ready. Staying fit, staying ready. Who impressed you the most? Good. Um, who impressed me the most? Um, that that David Luiz was good on the ball, very very good. That like, just you'll be running sprint. People will be sprinting at him, or just be very calm. You know, he's in control. Mm. He's in control of the situation. Um. Who else was? Uh, Ceballos was good in the middle. He just won imagine. the game. Yeah, he just won the game. Him as well. They're very composed. Just won the game. He knows what he's doing. He knows his next pass. Technically very good. So yeah, just them. Those players are very good. And obviously, Laka and Abamyang, they're not what they're doing. They're How are good. they with the first team players? How are they with you lot? Nah, they're nice, man. Very, very nice. Like, they'll start joking with you. <clears throat> they don't even know your name and they'll start joking with you already, that. Like, they're all they're all welcoming, they're all nice. Man. It's good. And how much does that motivate you? Obviously, being given a taste for it, being around the coaches and, and being around the first team players. How how much does that make you more hungry to eventually one day be there on a full time basis? Yeah, definitely, man. It just it's just it's it's you want to be where they are. So just watching them, seeing what they're doing, the people in your position, just watching them like Hector Bellerin, seeing what he's doing, seeing what got in there because he came through Arsenal as well. So making sure I'm doing what he's doing and hopefully I can be here as well. Mm. Obviously, you're still young and I'm young myself, but you're still young and, you know, I'm not going to put too much pressure on you, but have you ever thought about what you do away from football or post-playing career or things you want to do away from that stuff? Yeah, we have, we have like a lot of workshops about it, but right now, in my, I've thought about it, but I'm not, I'm, I don't know. To yeah. be honest with you, I don't know. In my head, it's just football, 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 make sure. Make sure that that's my number one priority. Make sure I pattern that, and then after that, I'll see if it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but I'll make sure it does. That makes sense, man. That's a good way of answering that, my guy. Um, do you think you lot are gonna get back to playing football again this season? I have to ask you because obviously with this COVID stuff. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Honestly, um, the club knows. Even they, they have no clue. They mm. tell us they have no clue. Us, we have no clue. Um, everyone's just a bit like, everyone's in free fall right now. Everyone's just waiting. Just waiting. I don't know whether academy football will come back. I know they've been saying they want to finish first new football. So, like, they've been saying that they, they will finish it. But I don't know. We'll just have to wait, wait and see, really. It's just in the same position as everyone else, just trying to work hard to stay ready. But I don't know what I'm, when I need when I'm gonna need to be ready. So, yeah, I don't know. that's it. and it, it's sad to hear that. Like my personal opinion is that academy football is done this season. And hopefully it's not, but it's just that we don't know how it's gonna react. There's just too much of a risk. So if we was to mm. look ahead into ne- next season and just consider this season stopped where it stopped, you know, league position, you know, it was rather disappointing. We didn't, yeah, we, yeah, we didn't get to defend our league title. FA Youth Cup kind of disappointing. Um, what would be your your goals for next season or things if this time in a year's time from now things that you've wanted to achieve or progress um, you want to make? Obviously, train with the first team more and just just hopefully play twenty play in the twenty threes team with more make that more of a normal thing. So it's not every once in a while. Hopefully, I can just just kick on and play in the twenty threes a bit more man, and just dominate eighteens football. If I play 18, if I play 23, is what I'm, I'm doing, I'm just dominating. Make sure that I'm ready, keep playing international football as well, but just dominating club football. I want you to, I want you lot to bring back the FA Youth Cup, man. Like, you lot, I thought you yeah. lot was going to do it this year for us because, you know, our first year scholars, you included, are sick. The ones coming next season are sick. I really want you mm. lot to bring that one home, man. I really think next we, season, I really think you have a good chance. Man. I don't want to jinx nothing, but yeah, now nah, let's not touch forward. <laughs> 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 next season, I think I think it'll be a good season. Because I do you remember the game against Blackburn by any chance? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was disappointing. What's your feelings on that, man? Because yeah, I feel like just going into the game, we weren't we weren't from from 
minute one, really, there was, they wanted it more than us. They, that's how it looked. That's how it came across. We, Some of us was working hard. Some of us just thought it was going to be a walk in the park. So not to call anyone out, but that's, that's it was the reality of it. So, I mean, just need to be better. Mm. How do you deal with, like, because obviously... A lot of things are out of your control. Like I've like I've spoken to you for a while now. You're quite a humble guy. You know, you're just someone you, you probably look at is I just play football for Arsenal, I'm a normal guy. But people are always looking at, oh, Dan, he's an Arsenal guy. Instagram, people are telling you you're the wonder kid in this, not just you, but everybody. How do you deal with that? Because it must be a bit overbearing, unhealthy for you guys at times, because the same people, the same energy to say you're this, if it goes another way, are gonna say you're this, that, and the third. Just just Focus on yourself, really. Like people telling telling me all these things, I try not to listen to them too much. I try to just listen to the people that that are in the game, like the coaches, the people that have an effect on my future. They might not have an effect on my future, but people that have been there before, done it before, or someone that that I know is very knowledgeable, someone that's not that's not trying to lead me on, that has the right intentions. So it's just just block out the wrong noise and just focus on yourself, really. Yeah. So listen to your family and your coaches and should be all right. Mm. Obviously, at your age, um, you know, people that aren't playing football, they, they're going to college, they're partying, they're, do, they're, they're doing things that you might have wanted to do or want to do from time to time, but you can't because you have to make sacrifices. Are there any, mm. like, are there people you, without going into it, you've had to, like, kind of distance yourself from and things like that because you're on a different sort of mission and they're not necessarily encouraging that? Yeah, yeah, it's been, I've been doing that from, from young, from young. I always known what I wanted to do. But when I was at Barnet, I was still doing that. I was still making sure that if he's not, if he's not, if this man here, he's not, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's kind of trying to restrain me, trying to make me do the, just have to, it's just life, isn't it? Meet new people, make new friends, type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. People so, in the mission. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? You have to, Having the friends that are trying to do the same thing as you helps you, man. So you just have to make sure that you have the right people around you. you have people, the same people from young. That's what I'm doing. I have the same people that are around me from young. Mm-hmm. That's the way I make sure that everyone's. I know them. I know their families. Everyone's proper. You know their intentions and whatnot. Yeah, mm, that makes sense. Obviously, what countries are you eligible to play football for? Technically, like due to heritage. Nigeria, because of my my grandparents. And England. If I had to tempt you, which one? Internet full time football now. You've you've progressed to the first team. You're playing for Arsenal. Which one? Right right now for me, my parents were born in England. I was born in England. So right now for me, it will be England, but you never know what happens. I could end up playing for Nigeria. I go to Nigeria a lot. So you never I never you never know what happens. It could be it could be either way, but for now, I'm an England boy for now. That makes sense. Finally, I want to ask you about Per Mertesacker because obviously I just know him as, I know he's doing his thing in the academy now, but I just know him about, I just know him as a footballer. How has he, how big is, of an impact has he had on your game? I know you, you touched on it, but what has he done? What are, has he put any steps in place at the academy that we don't necessarily see as fans? And, you know, what's the overall feeling being in the academy? Nah, Per's he's, he's done an excellent job. For me personally, just in my career, I've worked with him quite a lot. Like on a on a personal level, we have a, a good relationship. So uh, he's helped me, especially play from an attacker to defender. He was the one that that decided to do that. It, that would better my career and his work. So I have a lot of belief in him, and I know that when he tells me something is proper, he's been through the game. He's won the World Cup. He's won the FA Cup countless times. He's he knows what he's talking about. So. Anything that I'm like a sponge around him, anything that he's saying, I'm trying to soak it up, I'm trying to follow, do what he's done. Mm, that makes sense, man. And I know I said final question, but I've got one more. Mm. Um, I, thought I should have really mentioned it earlier. Obviously, come, all right, you've been at Barnet and it's, it applies to Barnet, but you went to Arsenal at, at under 14s. I assume you made some friends and things, some that didn't quite get scholarships or whatever, and they've had mixed successes. Some might have went off to other clubs, some might be looking for clubs to this day. How is what's your feelings around that? Like seeing that you know you're getting a scholarship or you're making progress, but your your people are getting released. And <clears throat> like um, I mean, it's football. Football's cut for it. That's that's the the main the biggest like loss of friends that like, in the team at Arsenal has been under sixteen. Like a lot of people that have been at the club for a long time got let go. A lot of players that 
very good players got let go. A lot of them, some of them don't play football. Some of them just stop playing football. Some of them are out of the clubs doing really well. So it's just, if you're not fancy that one club, it don't mean that another club's not going to think you're the best player for them. Do you know what I mean? It's just Arsenal, the top club, they're looking for the best players and and it's something that you just got to gotta play with a chip on your shoulder make sure that it's not you. That makes sense. All right, real final question now. If you were, if, if football wasn't a thing and you, you know, you're, you're this age now, what would you be pursuing? If football wasn't a thing, I was, I was a big athletics man. Big athletics man. I was there and I was very good at, um, I was a runner, but I started doing the long jump. I done long jump at a good level. So I reckon I'll be in that, but I don't know. Honestly, I reckon I did athletics because of football, because I was good at, because I was good at football. I reckon I, that's why I was good at athletics, but honestly, if football wasn't a thing, I, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know. Join the club because, I, like I said, I'm 25. I wanted to be a baller. It didn't work out. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. And somehow we're sat in yeah, this. I don't know. But yeah, man, you, you, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. And I have to say thank, thank you, first and foremost, for taking your time to do this and being so. Thank open. you, thank you. It's, it's been a wealth of knowledge for everybody, man. So, yeah, that's Dan. He, hopefully, he progresses to the first team. I'll be supporting him all the way. You always see me putting him up on Instagram and things because I'm a, I really am a big fan of his. I mean, Maybe Thank it's the right back association sort of stuff. I got a lot of, you know, I know how it feels sort of thing, but I appreciate it, my guy, man. So take care. Thank you, man. And easy, but.